visit from the Washington governor in Malden today. We've had this trauma all over Washington. He sees the destruction firsthand. People are finding out if there's anything left to save from their homes. When I pulled in, my heart did sink. And a sign of hope from a town that lost so much. Rebecca! Oh my God, Rebecca! As a kitty is reunited with its owner after a rescue saved it from the flames. A special edition of Creme 2 News at 4 starts right now. We're going to have a paved trail of this trail it runs from here from Rosalia. This is going to be a great tourist destination next summer. And I look forward to being here, maybe taking one of the first bike rides and see these houses being rebuilt. Governor Jay Inslee is in the town of Malden today, just days after a wildfire decimated the small town in rural Whitman County. He is seeing firsthand the damage and destruction the fire left behind. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Creme 2 News First at Four. I'm Tom Sherry. Welcome everyone, I'm Mark Hanrahan. We are reporting live here in Malden tonight, just three days after that destructive and fast moving wildfire just swept through this small town. It has been an incredible few days here. Right behind us, you can see as crews are continuing their efforts to bring power and communications back into this community after so much devastation came through here on Memorial Day. Yeah, and Whitney, when you pull in, you get really get a sense of just how quickly and how intense this fire swept through here. For some reference, we're sitting in in front of what used to be a city public works building reduced to rubble. You can see that dump truck here behind me. Just beyond that, the town's fire department. It came through th so quickly, the fire truck is still inside there tonight. Governor Inslee made the stop here today to witness this firsthand. Uh, the center of our heartbeat in the state of Washington is Malden, Washington. We know that we have 7 million people that would like to wrap their arms around the people who've lost their homes. So on Monday, which was Labor Day, there were about 130 homes here in Malden. By the time that day was through and the fire came through, there were just about two dozen that were still standing. Dozens of families now are homeless. They have nowhere to go. The city also lost every single public service building, including the post office, city hall, as well as Mark said, the fire station as well. So it has been incredible. Today, during his tour, Governor Jay Inslee vowed to help the city get back onto its feet. He met with the mayor as well as the sheriff to discuss what will be needed first, like food, shelter and communications. But they also wanted the governor to understand how the state can help with what will come next. We freed up uh, several hundred thousand dollars from our emergency fund for cash assistance. We want to get some cash to these families so they can eat and have a little bit of clothing and a little bit of uh, whatever they need to survive in the upcoming weeks. Governor Inslee stressed that Washingtonians need to be extremely careful during this time. Trees and grass are drier than the state has seen before. Inslee said the conditions right now are explosive due to a lack of humidity and high heat and of course that wind. Now just for a quick recap now of the conditions that led up to the destructive fire that swept through here in Malden and to nearby Pine City now. So on Monday, three fires, the Colfax Manning and Bab fire broke out, then spread quickly in those high winds. Well, today in Malden and Pine City. Just four homes are described as being damaged, about 121 homes and eight commercial properties, as well as 93 other structures are destroyed. So the Babs Malden fire burned more than 17,000 acres. At this point, it is still 0% contained. The Manning fire burned more than 3,000 acres. Tonight, we're told it is about 25% contained. The Colfax fire, which was the smallest, is now officially contained. But Pine City Malden Road remains closed. That goes from the west side of Pine City all the way to the east side of Malden. St. John, Sunset as well are also under level two evacuations this evening. Now there's been some criticism also from the National Guard about hearing that said there is additional National Guard presence in the Western Washington as they continue to fight fires over on that side of the state. But there has been criticism mm -hmm. that National Guard presence is not yet here in Eastern Washington, where the fires, of course, are much, much bigger. So I did take that question straight to the governor today to ask him specifically why that is. I also asked him how communities here across our region can better protect themselves for the next fire. 
What do you think can be done at the state level to make communities like this more resilient to fire? Uh, the things we can do around our individual houses are important. Uh, talking to the incident commander, uh, when we clean up brush around our house, when we get rid of you know, stuff in our gutters, uh, those things can be very effective and we can do these as individuals. It's amazing. When I go to fire scenes, I'll so frequently see one, two, three houses burned down, but one that's survived because they've done some basic things to remove brush around your house. It's amazingly effective. Those are some of the most important thing. Now, what can be done on a large landscape here? Probably not that much. This is not a forested area. There's a few pine trees, but this is not a situation where thinning could probably help. A lot of this is from grass and brush rather than trees. But in forests, there are things we can do to help thin forests so that there's less explosive fuels in the forest. And we are doing that. We spend about oh, over $10 million a year, I think $16 million on some of our prevention efforts. So we have to do all those things. What do you say to the people who are criticizing you for having the National Guard on smaller fires over on the west side, but not here on the east side where the fires are hundreds times bigger? Well, this is a, a determined by the, uh, by the mobilization community and that is led by local communities themselves. They all get together and they decide the prioritization. This is not a decision I make at all. I'm not consulted on this issue. It's decided by the professionals and that's the way it should be. So the fire chiefs from all over the state, Tri-Cities, Spokane, Okanagan, they all pitch in to figure out where the highest priorities are. We'll send the guard wherever they can do great jobs and uh, I'm really appreciative of their work. So I did confirm with the National Guard today that a request for additional assistance from the National Guard was submitted by DNR on Tuesday morning. It takes several days for those guardsmen to be able to deploy then. They are hoping to have about 75 guardsmen here in eastern Washington. They will be responding to the Whitney fire in Davenport. They hope to have them on the ground fighting that fire by this weekend. Yeah, and Commissioner of Public Lands Hillary France said this morning the fires had scorched somewhat like half a million acres across the state mm -hmm. of Washington. And and resources are just stretched thin. So as soon as we can get additional help, obviously that's going to be a huge help. Back here in Malden, in terms of the mayor here, she agreed with the governor today that when folks do rebuild here, they need to rebuild their structures that are more resilient to wildfires. We need to train our, our, our homeowners how to keep their places safe, you know, keep your grass low, keep it green, keep the rubble away from it as much as possible. I think that was possibly some of the key things that did save some of our homes. Fire doesn't choose, it just does, unfortunately. Um, so my home was saved. I was very lucky um, and I feel very fortunate for that. Also, Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers was here in Malden as well to today to see this damage firsthand. She made it very clear that to see the damage and to know what happened here is one thing in pictures, but it is quite another to come here to see the extent of the damage, to understand how quickly this fire moved through yeah. and how the people who were here at that time had no other alternative but to simply drop what they were doing and leave at that exact moment. She and the governor also commended the Whitman County Sheriff's deputies for helping people evacuate in those moments. She says that undoubtedly saved lives. See, this is like nothing we've ever experienced before. So, uh, I, you know, I plan to put together pictures from today and uh, impress upon the Trump administration the importance of a quick turnaround, that this really is like nothing we've ever experienced before, that there was no time there was no time to prepare for this fire, that the only, the only action was to evacuate, to get people out of their homes, and it's extraordinary due to the leadership of the sheriff and the mayor and the, and the neighbor helping neighbor that to date no lives were lost. And for that's a miracle, uh, uh, but now we go about rebuilding and there's a lot of work to be done. So the governor and the congresswoman both said that they are going to be presenting a package 
hoping for federal assistance to mm. continue to help these communities as well as the private citizens. They said there is a package that they must submit to the federal government. They're in the process right now of putting that together, but there is no guarantee that that will come through. In the meantime, locals here are hoping any kind of aid gets fast tracked. We spoke with a woman just before we went on tonight that came down and she said we literally had no time. Yep. There was no warning, she said. She said my brother was in our house. He smelled smoke. He looked outside. The flames were literally on their front porch, so he loaded up his mother-in-law, put it in their car, and it was so intense, it was actually melting the paint off their car, and they just had that fraction of a moment to escape. So for more information on specific fires and evacuations and emergency shelters, we've made it easy for you. You can just text the word wildfire to 509-448-2000, and we'll send that information directly to your phone. Well, while the governor was here today, we also asked him about his next stop, because after he toured the devastation here, he then continued on to Pullman, where he met with leaders at Washington State University to discuss coronavirus and how they're handling it there. He said he wants to know if the state can assist in any way, but he also applauded university city leaders and Pullman police for their efforts so far. As I think some of us thought, well, if the colleges are remote, we're going to be okay, right? If they're not in the classroom. But as these mostly young people are returning to the campuses, they're doing remote learning, but they're doing close socializing and they're partying like there's no tomorrow. And when there's no tomorrow, people get COVID. Well, the governor also stressed it's not just a WSU problem, but University of Washington and other universities across the country are experiencing outbreaks as well. He implored students across the state to take the proper precautions to keep the virus from spreading anymore. All right, let's switch gears now and talk about the forecast because as we know, it's been hugely impactful and important in terms of the fire activity. We want to bring in Chief Meteorologist Tom Sherry. Tom, the good news out here in Malden today at least, there's only a slight breeze, not very windy, but it is again warm and really dry. Yeah, and it's going to get hot and th there is some good news in the sense that by next Tuesday, there's a now a 40% chance we may get some rain. Yesterday I was talking about it being only a 20% probability of rain on Tuesday. Now that has been up to 40%. Uh, here in Spokane, our winds are calm, but they were generally out of the east and the northeast, meaning blowing towards the west. People in Portland and Seattle right now and uh, in the Columbia Basin dealing with thick smoke, very poor air quality in some of those communities. Well, the wind is expected to shift overnight tonight, and we think then we'll get more of a westerly wind, and that's going to bring that uh, smoke uh, into our area, unfortunately. 85 degrees is the current temperature, and we're looking for temperatures to really begin to heat up as well. Here's a look at the current air quality. Right now, we still have good air quality, but the forecast is for us to go to moderate to unhealthy for sensitive groups. We think that may happen overnight and again tomorrow. Again, finger Fingers crossed that doesn't occur. Look for clear and mild weather early this evening with an overnight low of 52. The wind shifts tomorrow and it gets hot. We look for a daytime high of 90 with haze and possible smoke. Looking ahead to the weekend, it remains hot and dry. And again, we'll get more of a southwesterly wind, so it could be thick with smoke in our region. We'll look for 89 on Saturday, 91 on Sunday. I'll check your seven day forecast, which includes a chance of some showers on Tuesday. Details on that coming up in just a few minutes.